Hey, yo, what's up? What's happening? It's me, Rico Rich. I just got off. Um, still organizing the house new one. Anyway, soccer vlog. Freaking, I don't know, 9 January 2012. Anyway, what's going on, everybody? I just listened a little bit. Um, good news is... Well, I'll give you the bad news first. The bad news is I have no way to watch the Arsenal Leeds United FA Cup matchup, which is going on right now as I speak. But luckily for me, I'm on the internet and I'm listening to the, I guess you could say, the indirect highlights through TalkSport. And um, to my understanding, Terry Henry had just came in and scored within the first couple minutes as he came in or whatever. And I just wanted to talk about that, uh, short-term loans, um, some good, some bad, it's, uh, fairly, it's probably nothing new over there in Europe, but over here in America, it's more like, what's the point, um, outside, uh, and you know, when I say this, I'm really thinking of it from a, um, broader perspective, not just from a soccer perspective, uh, a lot of people say, okay, it's good for the player that's, that's not, you know, when I'm looking at it from a Major League Soccer perspective, because we're talking about Terry Henry, Landon Donovan, and David Beckham, who has uh, done it before, um, a couple years back, and it's starting to become more of a trend now with Major League Soccer players and stuff, and I was listening to a couple podcasts where he was dealing with stuff like that, um, short-term loans, where Major League Soccer players, with the case of Henry, Landon Donovan, uh, showing up to a Premier League team for only a couple months. Um, I guess the good thing about it is the player gets some extra training time or whatever, and um, they want to do it, you know, keep fresh, keep in shape or whatever. I guess that's okay in, in, in a sense. Then another part is just like, I mean, I don't know the mindset of Everton fans or the Everton organization or the Arsenal fans over there in the Arsenal organization, but. I, well, I'll take Arsenal's perspective. Arsenal is in the hunt for the league title, to my understanding. And well, I'll look at this point. If you're in the hunt for the league title, I understand, it, and you're taking a player that could be effective for your team, why do you want to have him for two months? And you know, you still got time for the season. That's that's the con I I see out of that. And it's like me, I I couldn't pin a player that I can only have for two months. You know, if I could just have, I could see if he was here for the rest of the season. Yeah, okay, I could utilize them for the time of the remainder of the season. Now, it's done somewhat, um, I, I ain't going to say the same, but um, a little similar circumstances here in the United States, with um, especially in the NBA, you might have a mid-season trade where a team is missing a piece that can get them to the playoffs. Um, actually, Carmelo Anthony trade is a good example. The Denver Nuggets traded. Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks traded some players and both got some good deals out of the Knicks made a decent playoff run the uh, Nuggets did a decent playoff run and everybody's happy you know it wasn't like they Nuggets say okay we're going to send you to New York for a couple months to see how you like it or whatever no it doesn't work that way so it's like um, with the short term loan thing personally me I'm not a big fan of it but I, I see the, the good and the bad out of it anyway you know, I remember when David Beckham started doing it, when he went to AC Milan, a lot of LA Galaxy fans were like flipping because they thought it was disloyal and stuff. And like I said, the good about his situation, I think he really wanted to leave at that particular time. You know, he was just trying to find a way out. And then, you know, I still I still like that. But at the same time, you know, the mentality, the cult I think it's also a culture thing too, you know, soccer players are not used to um, American sports customs where uh, our sports here in the states are not like soccer, where it's damn near all year long. Um, most of our sports are no more than six, eight months, season long. I think baseball is traditionally about eight months, usually anywhere from April all the way through November. Yeah, pretty much. And um, football season is fairly short compared. Basketball season, same thing. But it's uh, culturally, it's just. We're not used to having one sport being played all year long. So y'all guys outside the states that are not familiar with our sports culture and um, asking why Major League Soccer season is so short because usually it's um, culturally aligned or traditionally aligned to American sports um, 
calendar where basically you have your six and eight months and you move on. So um, that's another debate, I guess, I'll, or not a debate. So I guess that's another comment I'll touch more deep on to um, way how Major League Soccer does their season in comparison to other leagues around the world, whether or not should a Major League Soccer even bother to trend with the rest of the world. And I hate saying the rest of the world because really it's not really the rest of the world. It's really Europe, you know. And y'all can debate with me about that all you want. But, um, uh, yeah. Anyway, what else I got? Oh, yeah. Uh, recently, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I'm kind of broadened up a little bit. Um, I ain't going to say it was a big deal, but like a couple weeks back, one of the soccer players named Preston Zimmerman made some complaints on Twitter how um, current coach Jurgen Klinsmann selecting his United States national team players and um, I think a lot of he got a lot of flack a lot of um, negative response or I don't even know how to say it but uh, because you got some of the so called soccer pundits that take their take on it um, a lot of it's really against him but you know I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll say it like this because dude actually has kind of a point you know, but at the same time, um, as I look at the good and the bad, really my broad point is basically dual citizenship players in the United States national team. Pretty much, I've been following really the closely the United States national team since, I don't know, 1994 World Cup time. And not as much before then, because like I said, it wasn't much soccer play back then. But um, as time went on since 1990, a lot of the soccer players, if not all of them, majority of them have some type of foreign ties that is one of their parents or both of their parents are from another country or maybe they be born from another country and they immigrated or lived in America long enough to be like basically Americanized or um, something like that then you also over time had situations like uh, I know a lot of American soccer fans had uh, complained about the situation with uh, Giuseppe Rossi Giuseppe Rossi, who never played for the United States national team, plays with uh, international Italy, he plays in Europe. And what tripped me out of that situation, I'm like, why are you uh, complaining about someone that had no interest, let alone never even played for the national team? And you got other situations too related to that. Uh, my take on that is just like, um, I think it's a case by case basis. Personally, with me, um, I could feel resent. I could feel Mr. Zimmerman's um, resentment about it. You know that uh, you also a lot of people say, "Well, we're trying to win. We're trying to win. We're trying to win." And I'm, um, you know, I'm thinking to myself, "Well, we've been trying to win pretty much since for the last 20 years now." You know, so I mean, different approach. Yeah, do I embrace it? Do I embrace Jurgen Klinsmann's philosophy? No, all of it. Like I said, I didn't like how he disrespected um, U.S. soccer's development uh, in the 2010 World Cup on ESPN. He really shitted everybody. He really threw shit in everybody's face. You're talking about it. Um, unless you're a Euro snob, Euro snob, y'all are eating it up. But uh, another thing was, like I said, he's coached now. Ain't really too much to do about it. We'll see. We'll see when the World Cup qualifiers come. We'll see when the other more important stuff comes along right now. We're just playing these exhibition games. It doesn't really matter that much. And, um, you know, um, Jurgen Klinsmann still has a lot to prove. If he feels he has to go to Germany to do that, it's a wait and see. You know, there's some guys that are pretty good. Uh, Jermaine Jones, you know, he, he's good in his own right. And um, got this Chandler dude, a couple other guys from Germany that he's looking at. We'll see. And um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. And uh, we'll go ahead and cut this short for now. I'm going to do a part two since I still got more to say. So stay tuned.